BF Super Flyweight battle between Domingo Sosa and Danny Kid Dynamite Romero. This ought to be a good one, and this one will be coming up in just a few moments as we get set to take you back downstairs to our announcers who sometimes agree, sometimes disagree. Gil Clancy, Larry Merchant, and Jim Lampley. And entering the ring is Domingo Sosa. 26 wins, three losses, no draws, 18 KOs. The records of these fighters tonight being brought to you by The Ring, the Bible of boxing. And there are the numbers on the fighter from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. He weighed in at 115 pounds. Another self-managed fighter on the order of George Foreman, who is, of course, self-managed. And there is Danny Kidd Lightning Romero, super flyweight champion for the National Association of Boxing Federations. He is 20-0, 18 knockouts out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, trained by his father, Danny Romero Sr. He's been boxing since he was five years old and is regarded as an outstanding prospect with potential world title aspirations down the road. Tale of the tape between Danny Kid Lightning and Romero and Domingo Sosa. And you can see that there's an 11-year age difference, so there's an enormous difference in incentive and ambition. Sosa on the far side of the curve. Romero is the rising star here. Two-inch reach advantage for Romero, who will eventually be going up and wait and sees himself at this point as a big, rangy, 115-pound cat. Larry? Question is, since he's moving up from the flyweight division, will he take his considerable punch with him as he moves up to fighting bigger fights and bigger fighters? And our punch stat numbers, you can see both fighters roughly as active, but Romero much more accurate. And the jabs, Romero has an edge even there. NABF rules with Harold Letterman. Harold? Uh, Danny Romero and Domingo Sosa will box tonight using the rules of the North American Boxing Federation. 12 rounds. There is no standing A count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. You can be saved by the bell in the last round only. Only the referee can stop the fight. And in case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we go to the scorecards after three rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. Jim. Michael Buffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand Garden here in Las Vegas, Top Rank Incorporated, along with your King of Beers, Budweiser, present championship boxing sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission and the North American Boxing Federation. The three judges assigned to this bout will be Art Lurie, Al Siciliano, and Kevin McCarl. NABF supervisor is Gary Langley. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Jay Nady. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for the NABF Super Flyweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with black trim, weighing in at 115 pounds. He comes to us from the Dominican Republic with a professional record of 26 victories, 18 by KO against only three defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the challenger, Domingo Sol. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the gold trunks with red letters, weighing in also at 115 pounds. His professional record is 20 and 0, 18 by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, presenting the NABF Super Flyweight Champion, Kid Dinamita, Danny Romero. They wanted to keep it during the announcements. Do you guys have any questions? I gave you instructions earlier in your dressing room. We have 12 rounds of boxing now. Let's go to work. Sosa, the manager, forgot to tell Sosa, the fighter, to I make help. weight. He had to take off four pounds after the weigh-in yesterday, which is a lot of pounds for Any a little time? man. Absolutely, no question about it. I really don't know how he did it, though, Larry, to tell you the truth. Fight is scheduled for 12 rounds because of Danny Romero's NABF 
flyweight or super flyweight championship. This Take is that a, bucket this down, is a please, good Eric. test for Danny Romero. The Sosa has only lost three okay, fights in his work. career and all the former world champions. Romero just won that NABF title a month ago, whereas Domingo Sosa comes in off a 248 day layoff, which probably contributed to the difficulty he had making weight. One thing I like about the Danny Romero, he gets leverage on every punch he throws. He landed a long right hand early, which caused Sosa to blink just a little bit. Now Romero goes to the body and tries to come over the top with the right hand, just missed. Oh! No knockdown. Sosa was able to stay up with the help of the ropes. You got a box, you got a box, you got a box! Hit dynamite. Showing power with both hands. Pretty impressive, Gail. Very, very impressive when you consider that uh, it took Michael Carvajal uh, a lot longer to get rid of him. The other two world champions he went the distance with. But this Danny Romero, I, I mentioned he gets leverage, leverage on every, on every punch. punch. Yeah, you every punch. Yeah. And, and the ambition you mentioned earlier, you could see it in a, in a half a minute that okay. okay. this kid is... is using his body as a projectile to get someplace. And, no and really, question. after the first long right hand in the opening seconds, it looked to me as though Sosa wasn't terribly <laughs> interested in feeling that anymore. And the right hand that drove him into the ropes and almost down was a sensational right cross shot. Unofficially, it's a minute and six of the first round. Let's quickly look at the replay. Larry? Well, you can see he was down and probably would have been better off taking account at that point. But Romero wastes very few punches here. Goes to the body, goes to the head, to the jaw, pinpointing, sharpshooting his shots. Patiently, he, he's not going to let him get away. He I'm, says his favorite fighter is Roberto Duran, and he <laughs> looked like Duran with that finishing instinct there. And when he throws his punches, he intends them to go in the front of the head and out the back. There's no pulling back when he punches. His punches go right through you. He makes a commitment. And if you want to be a champion, you got to make a commitment to your punches. A proper nickname, Danny Kid Dynamite Romero. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee Jay Nady reaches the count of 10 and stops the bout. The official time, one minute, six seconds of the very first round. The winner by knockout victory, still the undefeated NABF Super Flyway champion, Kid Dynamita. Danny Romero! Hundred fifteen pound fighter Gill could move up eventually to featherweight, perhaps even to lightweight, but what punching power he demonstrated in that brief span. Uh, Jim, he really excites me, this kid does. Not only as a fighter, personality-wise and everything, he, he just has so much confidence in himself and his ability to what he's going to do when he goes in that ring, and he does it. And he was terrific yesterday in our discussion with him for a little bit more of a taste of the personality of Danny Kidd, Dynamite Romero. Let's go up to the ring and Larry Merchant. Danny, congratulations. It didn't take you long. You didn't want to give these fans much of a show here, did you? No, well, we came out to destroy, and as you see, and that's what was happened. Did the first punch you hit him hurt him? Because it looked like that, that from that right hand on, he wasn't very interested. Right. You know, the first shot that I hit, the big first right hand, uh, took away everything he had. You seen he could take shots, so he was laying on the ropes, taking big shots that I was bombing. What is your ambition now? Where do you go from here? Our ambition and our all-time goal is to win a world championship. I don't care who it's against, where it's at. Hopefully, it can happen here on my great state of Albuquerque, New Mexico. That is the biggest ambition. And with Big Bob Aaron, we're going to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. He's a, he's a hot rod fan, and it ain't going to take him very long to get where he wants to go. James? All right, Larry, thank you very much. I remember from the conversation yesterday with uh, Kid Dynamite that he said he leads a pretty boring lifestyle because he is so committed to becoming the best possible boxer that he can. So, therefore, he stays away from the bad influences. He's focused only on boxing. The only outlet that he has, as Larry Merchant mentioned, 
is in fact adding to his collection of hot rods. He wants a, a few vintage model Mercedes and he looks like he's well on his way to making that happen. He is in fact committed to also giving the right message to school kids working throughout the state of New Mexico, speaking to school kids about staying away from drugs and in fact doing the right thing, all the fundamentals that help you to pursue and attain your objective. Well, we've got a lot more coming. Of course, Oscar De La Hoya is up next and we'll set the stage for that match here from the MGM Grand after this. Give your wardrobe the old one-two punch with great-looking knockout wear from the MGM Grand. Call 1-800-364-6472 for a free catalog of exciting activewear. You'll see all the great Tony vs. Jones Uncivil War items, too. Call now at 1-800-364-6472 for a shopping MGM Grand catalog featuring bold, colorful sweatshirts, t-shirts, jackets, and hats. All your favorite knockout wear. Call today. All right, the next match coming up will be for the WBO Lightweight Championship, and the belt holder that is, and that one, of course, is Oscar De La Hoya. He'll be taking on a very tough competitor in the person of Carl Griffith. Now, the question about De La Hoya, is he the real thing? Everyone knows that he's got all the charisma, an attractive-looking boxer, very flashy, good boxer puncher, but he hasn't had the stiffest of competition. Many people thought that might have been against Paez, his last one. Most folks say, hey, this is a tough one he's got coming up right now. For those who will set the stage a little bit more, more insight, let's take you back downstairs. Gil Clancy, Larry Merchant, and Jim Lampley. All right, thank you very much, James. When last we saw Oscar De La Hoya, it was in this same arena when he fought Jorge Paez and knocked him out in the second round. He continues to ascend toward the stardom, which has long been predicted for him, Larry. We've talked about the buildup for the main event tonight. How about the expectations surrounding De La Hoya going all the way back to Barcelona and before? Have they been too high in retrospect? Well, it's always flattering, and it can be inspiring, or it can be a burden, depending on who you are. But to set someone up as the second coming of Sugar Ray Leonard is not just high expectations, it's the highest expectations. So fans naturally are saying, show us, and show us against not just tomato cans and little boys and old men and bad fighters, but against good fighters. Well, De La Hoya says he's now going into the second stage of his rocket. He wants to fight better fighters. Within six months, he's fighting for one of the big titles, providing he wins here tonight and keeps winning. If he doesn't let this hold him back, these expectations, if all of the, the sideshow of making him a media star doesn't slow him down and distract from him, the sky is still a limit for this rocket. He was knocked down a couple of times in fights preceding the battle against Paez. We said before the Paez fight that that might be a tough test. And as we mentioned, he got the easy second round knockout. Now he gets ready to fight a tough fighter named Carl Griffith. And again, Gil, we're in the position of saying, well, maybe Carl Griffith is the toughest opponent yet for Oscar De La Hoya. You buy that? There's no question about it. Uh, Carl Griffith had 150 amateur fights, 33 professional fights, only lost three times. Only been on the deck once, never been knocked out. And the guy to put him on the deck was a pretty good puncher, Roger Mayweather. He went up, got up and finished the, the fight. So this is a good test uh, for Oscar De La Hoya. Indeed. If De La Hoya can put this man on the canvas, he joins pretty good company in Mayweather and once again shows the punching power, which in the view of many makes him a potential superstar in the sport. Quickly, let's look at the tail of the tape now for Oscar De La Hoya and Carl Griffith Jr. De La Hoya, 21 years old. You see the four-inch height advantage but surprisingly that doesn't translate to a big reach advantage against Griffith as Griffith with relatively long arms is equal in reach to De La Hoya. They both weighed in at 135 pounds. Punch that numbers Larry. And here are the numbers you can see why there is so much cause for hope for Oscar De La Hoya. He is an active fighter and a very accurate fighter. Jabs, that's not De La Hoya's main game. He throws a lot of hard punches. He's going to have to deal with Griffith's jab in this fight. Rules of the bout once again with Harold Letterman and the third set of rules for our third bout of the evening. Jim, Oscar De La Hoya and Carl Griffith will box tonight using the rules of the World Boxing Organization. 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. You can be saved by the belt in the last round only. Only the referee can stop the fight. And in case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, 
we go to the scorecards after three rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. Jim, we must give a word of congratulations to tonight's referee in this fight, Mitch Halpern, who did a marvelous job in stopping last week's fight when Terry Norris fouled uh, Luis Santana blatantly in Mexico. Let's hope he doesn't have to make a decision that tough in this fight tonight. Now, here's Carl Griffith entering the ring. He's from Lorraine, Ohio, which is outside of Cleveland. Ranks number seven in the WBO's rankings. Number three on the WBA list in the lightweight division. A record of 28 wins, three losses, and two draws. We'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. As we mentioned, he's 25 years old, and he is yet another self-managed professional fighter. Once Recently again, had a bout with drugs. 